Hey you guys, it's Erica with Crippin's Poop and Scoopin'. Welcome back to my channel. Part one of Nick's question. What I would have done differently in the beginning when I started my poop scooping business. Stay tuned. So this question comes in from Nick. Thank you so much for your question. He wanted to know a couple questions, but the one I'm gonna talk about in this video is what would I have done differently in the beginning when I started my business? Now, I sat down and I really had to think about this one because overall, I'm very happy with the choices that I made. I really didn't have I really didn't have like a bad turnout. Yeah, there was some pricing issues when I first started, um, maybe some communication issues, but really other than that, I've been extremely happy with my business. So I made a list and I was able to actually come up with six things that I would have done differently. So they're not in any specific order. All right, so the first one. Um, with my website, my website is www.poopinscoopin.com. I think what I would have done differently is I would have made it like a key word that was like searched on Google, like pet waste removal, dog poop removal, uh, pooper scooper, something along those lines. I would have put a keyword into my domain for my website. I would have done that differently. I would have saved money for taxes right away. Whatever I made, I would have taken that 30% and put it away for taxes immediately. For instance, when I first started, I was charging $55 a month. I don't know why, I just like the number five, so I chose 55. I would have immediately taken 30% of that $55, tucked it away into a savings account, not think about it until tax time. That's what I would have done differently there. I would have started using my CRM right away. I have been using Yardbooks for about a year, but I haven't really dedicated and actually utilized it like I should. A lot of my customer information is literally just in a Google Doc. And yeah, it worked, but it's really not the most efficient. And when I first when I first started, a lot of my customer information was literally written on a piece of paper like this and when I would do my spring cleans I would literally draw a line down the middle draw a line draw a line so I had six squares and I would just write their information in those squares and I just had it in a notebook um, yeah it was not very organized at all and going along with that right away I would have asked for this information because I would just ask for people's like address, their like first name, I would get their phone number sometimes if they contacted me on messenger sometimes I wouldn't get their phone number and it <laughs> it was really messy in the beginning I mean I got all the jobs done and I got my money and I did well but behind the scenes it was so sloppy so I would have asked for their first and last name right away their email address obviously their home address and their phone number and all of that information would have been put into my CRM immediately I would have taken a mini vacation after the spring rush my first spring was it was wonderful it was so intense I had so many customers I made a ton of money I was working sun up to sundown but I'm gonna tell you what I darn near had a mental breakdown and I should have taken a little mini vacation either before or after that springtime rush to like take care of myself and kind of like regroup. Not stress out about not knowing everything. When I first when I first started the business, I was like, I have to know everything. I have to make a policies and procedures. I have to do this. I have to do that. Well, it's like, how, how can I make a full on policies and procedures when I don't even know what's going to happen? I don't even really know fully how I want my business to run. Um, I thought I had to have every single thing figured out and I was beating myself up over it for not having it figured out. And then I realized like, it's fine. You figure it out as you go and make adjustments. I could have saved myself a lot of stress, a lot of headaches, and a lot of emotional distress just by being like, it's cool, Erica. You will figure it out as time goes on. 
I wouldn't have wasted my money on stupid stuff. And when I say stupid stuff, it's more or less about stupid advertisement. Um, <laughs> having a business phone number and being new in business, people are going to call you all the time. And this is my favorite one. Bring, bring. Hello? Erica with Coupons Poop and Scoopin. Hi, my name is So is So, and I am from Google. I noticed that your business is located in Westland, Michigan. We actually just had an opening on the first page of Google. Now, these type of openings don't happen very often, and you know how hard it is to get on the first page of Google. So I would like to discuss with you about your website, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of times they'll be like, oh, I looked at your page. They usually are like, oh, your tagline is super hilarious, blah, 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 blah. I made the mistake of falling into it. I think I ended up paying like 800 bucks to get optimized to be on the first page of Google. It didn't work. I wasted my money. I also got talked <laughs> into paying money to be in the MJR, which is our local movie theater, into their brochure that's going to be sitting on the counter. I think I ended up paying them like four or five hundred bucks. Never got a phone call from that. I also wasted money advertising on the radio. Most of my free advertisement is what has made me the most money. Facebook, Nextdoor app. With advertising, this is the thing. Either you need to put forth time or you need to put forth money. When you're starting your business, a lot of times you don't have money, so you're gonna have to take the time to really dive in and get creative with advertising. And these advertising companies know what they're talking about and they know how to work you, and I really feel like they know how to take advantage of you. So when they call you, hang up on them. Don't even give them a time of day. And last but not least, I think this is number seven, I think just having confidence in myself, um, being more confident, having confidence in the business, not letting people kind of deter me, um, not let people, like their words affect like how I'm feeling about myself or how I'm feeling about my business because at the end of the day, their opinion doesn't matter. And my husband's brother Justin said this one thing, this one like phrase or quote or whatever it is that really like blew my mind and I, I repeat it and recite it pretty much every single day. One that controls your emotions controls you. Let me repeat that. One that controls your emotions controls you. It's so powerful and it literally has changed my life. All right, that's it for this video. Smash that thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, well, there's a button for that as well. Until next time.